There are so many sources of the Kong surname, and there are nearly three million people with the surname of a Kong in the world at present. However, not all people with the surname of Kong are direct descendants of a Confucius. I'm so honored that I'm one of the direct descendants of Confucius and one of the 76th generation uh, descendants of Confucius. We have the longest family tree or genealogy uh, of Kong family. And uh, I found the name of my grandpa in the family tree. And I told this to my father. And my father got so excited that he uh, <laughs> honored me and uh, gave, gave me uh, a great, great hug. You questioned, in fact, Professor Kong, about the concept of a clash of civilizations. Yes. You said earlier in your academic paper that you do not believe uh, this is the rule of the world. I really appreciate your uh, patience to <laughs> read my somewhat boring paper on Tianxia. Uh, but I, I think the so-called uh, clash of civilizations thesis first uh, put forward by Professor Samuel Huntington is very forward-looking and very realistic and enlightening. However, the clash of civilization theory has a strong Western-centric feature, which urgently needs to be corrected by Oriental, you know, world insight, including Confucianism. And this includes the Confucian ideal of all under heaven or Tianxia. I think it is uh, of a great realistic importance for modern thinkers all around the world to return to the classical world of the XU age or even pre-XU age and to revisit the wisdom of the ancient philosophers, uh, including Confucius, on the governance of the world. Reflecting on the great spiritual creation of the ancient uh, sages thousands of years ago, for example, Tianxia ideal for Confucianism, you know, it has its uh, origin in the uh, political history of a Zhou dynasty. And for the Zhou dynasty, they try their effort to allow the survival of the Yin house and other former lords of, uh, you know, Tianxia's descendants. And in Chinese, we call it uh, Cun Wang Xu Jue. It's a, a very advanced political humanitarianism. And, you know, in addition, it is also uh, constituted an important source of a uh, secular rationalism in ancient China, and thus lays the foundation of the highly inclusive and the cohesive Chinese civilization and the widely accepted consensus for the Tianxia ideal. The Tianxia is a very Chinese word. There is yes. hardly any direct translation in English language of this concept. Uh, Confucius does not speak English. And one of the great difficulties we face uh, in the dialogue between Eastern and Western uh, civilizations or, or scholars is precisely the intangibility and the misunderstandings on the key concepts or terms such as Tianxia, as you mentioned. And another difficulty is that Confucius does not speak modern Mandarin or modern Chinese. So scholars who are within a certain civilization may not necessarily understand some of the major concepts or key uh, terms uh, in, a, uh, in their uh, classical period. So this is very, very difficult. This requires the academic community to make a painstaking effort to understand its own civilization and uh, paraphrase it in modern language. And at the same time, we should strive to understand other civilizations and the use of form of language that can be used to carry out modern transformation and cross civilization communication, such as the Tianxia term. And I think it is differs from the notion of uh, the so-called you know, international system because Tianxia denies the notion of a nation. And uh, Tianxia is not a cosmopolitan order you know, Tianxia has a very, very strong sense of uh, morality and uh, civilizational communication. And the Tian, you, you know, it, it, it is the ultimate source of legitimacy, just like uh, in ancient Greek philosophical term, uh, 
logos, people are on all another heaven. They should behave normals. We should follow uh, the example of uh, Tian and to govern all under the heaven, all under, all around the world.